Hey there, Simon here from AQ Outdoors and Splitboard HQ. Just checking in with a review of sorts on the benefits of using a specific splitboarding boot while you're out in the backcountry. Just to set this little review up is that there's no requirement or need to use a specific splitboarding boot. Your resort boots will work just fine with soft boot splitboard bindings. This is more just to cover the benefits of these specific boots that are built for backcountry riding. For a bit of context, I've been splitboarding for 17 or 18 years. Started on the old DIY kit, have used soft boots, hard boots, splitboard specific boots, resort boots, and everything in between. Um, largely ride hard boots now, but definitely flip and flop backwards and forwards during the season between hard boots and soft boots. Uh, the boot I have here with me today is the Deluxe Spark XV TFP, a pretty high end boot from Deluxe. Splitboard specific boots are going to run you somewhere between 450 and 900 bucks Canadian. The higher the price, the more features you get as the price drops, kind of you lose some of those feature sets. So to dive right into it, we'll just look at some of the features that make splitboard specific boots stand apart from resort boots. So firstly, when you're in touring mode, splitboard bindings tend to wear in specific areas. So it's typically around the join here of the sole and the mid and the lower part of the boot, and then also along the side of the lower part of the boot here. So what Spark have done and what other manufacturers do is they'll use rubber or leather reinforcement here so that when the boot's moving and there's inevitably a little bit of movement in the bindings, these areas don't wear quickly. So you get a much longer lasting lower portion of the boot. Resort boots tend to get trashed in that area there. And also in the back here where the high back and the heel cup is, this is actually reinforced for a crampon, but that also provides more uh, durability and long lasting material and then you've also reinforced all the way back up here for the high back leather wrapped around. So that's the first thing that is done really well with splitboard specific boots. The next thing is the sole. So there's pros and cons to this I think for, for people who are used to resort boots. First of all, most of them, especially the higher end ones, will have a Vibram sole, very much like a mountaineering boot sole. Uh, so this provides really good traction on slippery rocks, ice or when you're boot packing. Uh, so that's really nice. There's also a shank built into here. If you don't, if you're not familiar with the term of shank, it's basically a nylon or a metal insert in between the sole and the midsole here, and so it basically stiffens the boot. So if you're climbing up a, if you're climbing, your foot doesn't want to sag. So basically, if you're kicking steps or whatever, you have a flat platform here to stand on. So that reduces calf fatigue. So that's huge if you're boot packing a lot. Uh, it also protects you from like impalement stuff. So there's a barrier here, like a nail obviously, but anything sharp, it won't allow it to penetrate through to where your foot is. Uh, and it also makes everything pivot from the front. So when you're walking, because there's no flex in it, it pivots like this. And then it all cr also creates lateral and forward backwards stability in the boot. So, so all of that comes together to, to minimize fatigue over the course of a long day. So that's the sole. There's a ton going on there for sure. The next thing that splitboard specific bindings will, will have usually is a heel and or toe bail for a fast fit crampon. This one here just has the heel, so you can use the semi-automatic ones. Toe cup over here, and then you have the lever on the back. Just to clarify, this is for a boot crampon, not for a splitboard binding crampon. So this is if you're boot packing, climbing icy slopes, or doing sort of more mountaineering style objectives. It's something that we find not a lot of people tend to use, but if you are doing bigger days and you're doing more alpine climbing style splitboarding, then this is a really valuable piece because you don't have the, the uh, the fast, not the fast fit, but the, the ones that just use straps, they tend to get a little bit sloppy and they're not nearly as high performing. The next part is that splitboard uh, boots tend to have a pretty advanced lacing system. So this one here is two stages. So we have our red boa here and our black one here. So the red one adjusts just over the midfoot here, like where your foot joins your ankle. So typically when you're touring, you'll keep that pretty tight to stop slippage and moving your foot inside the boot because that can cause blisters and hot spots. But you will leave the uh, you will leave this part here nice and loose because you want to actually have movement in the boot while you're touring so you can actually sort of have a longer stride length. So combined with that is some of the really nice splitboarding boots will have sort of a 
walk mode. You're probably familiar with touring boots, ski touring boots, they'll have a walk mode, which allows more movement forwards and backwards. So what Deluxe do is they basically have this bit that's flared out at the back and it creates space. So when that's loosened up, that's loosened up, this red one can remain tight. It actually gives room to increase the stride length. So you won't, when you step forwards and you're gliding, you're less likely to meet uh, resistance in the high back. So once everything here gets tightened up with the power straps, that locks everything in tight and that, and that uh, mobility is, is removed. So when you're in riding mode, if you like a really stiff setup. So yeah, then we've got, so in riding mode, we can then tighten all of this up. And so that's, that fastens everything nice and tight. And then you've got like a, a really nice, rigid, stiff, tight boot in all the right places. So those advanced lacing systems are pretty huge as far as these higher end splitboard boots go, for sure. So another part of these boots that is often unusual for splitboarders is they actually, or snowboarders, sorry, is they have thermo moldable liners. So another part of the sort of advanced lacing system is you have this quick tighten strap on the inside on the, uh, on the liner, okay? So that helps tighten everything up on the inside and then you can tighten the outside of the, sh the shell of the boot. So another feature of sort of higher end splitboard specific boots that snowboarders aren't typically used to is you have thermo moldable liners on the inside. So basically these work like ski boot liners. So you can go to a boot fitter, um, they can pad out all of, they, they take a measurement of your foot, then they'll pad out any lumps and bumps and everything. They'll heat this up, stick your foot in there, and then that'll make a mold of your foot essentially inside the boot. They then let it cool, you take your foot out, and then essentially you have a blueprint of your foot. So it kind of reduces that breaking in period, which especially split boarding can be really uncomfortable. Lots of blisters, lots of days shortened. Uh, if you get these thermo molded beforehand, you can kind of do some of that leg work up front, which makes for a more comfortable and pleasant day out in the mountains. The other thing that I'll just add with these, just a smaller note, is that unlike resort boots, which are designed to fit hundreds of different, of mo different models of bindings, there's only you know, a handful or less of mainstream splitboard bindings. So it's very easy for these manufacturers to ensure that the shell of the boot fits really, really well with, um, with that small range of, of splitboarding boots. So that's a really nice feature as well. You know with almost certainty that any brand that you buy is gonna fit really well with splitboard bindings. So that's kind of it. That's a bit of a rundown and some detail on uh, the features that might benefit you in the backcountry using a splitboard specific boot. If you have any more questions, comments, or would like to hear more, you can just stick a note in the comments below. But otherwise, thank you so much for checking out the video. Hope it was helpful and uh, hope you have a great season out in the mountains.